I really love this time of year where spring is unfurling at breakneck speed and it feels like you can go outside and see something brand new every single day. This week I was inspired by all of the beautiful edible flowers popping up all over our yard to make some celebratory spring pasta. First, I gathered some of the many little violets dotting our yard. Some people deride these as a weed, but I really love this cute little native wildflower. I think it adds such wonderful color to early and mid spring, and it has a sweet, mild flavor that's good in a variety of dishes. I also collected some forget-me-not flowers, I'm a sucker for any blue flower, and some flowers from mustard plants that we grew last year that were starting to go to seed. These not only will provide a pop of bright yellow color to our pasta, but also some nice mustardy kale-y flavor. To add even more color and flavor to this pasta, I used a traditional Italian technique of enriching the dough with chopped nettle leaves. Stinging nettle is one of my favorite spring edibles. It's so full of vitamins and minerals and I really crave it this time of year. First, I always blanch the nettles to denature those stingers so they won't irritate my skin. And then I stripped off the leaves and chopped them up really finely to incorporate them into the pasta.
foraged some chestnuts last fall and brought them to us, and we used them to grind up into a sweet, nutty flour. I thought it would be perfect to go with our woodland pasta vibes. Also, I was out of regular flour and I didn't feel like going to the store. So I added 100 grams each of regular all-purpose flour and chestnut flour, and then about a cup of the chopped up nettle leaves. This is a thick, sticky dough, so it took some serious kneading to get it to all come together, but in the end, it resulted in this beautiful, vibrant green color that made me really happy. stuck the ball of dough in the fridge to chill for a few hours and then went out to look for some toppings. If you saw our last video, then you know that Jordan had brain surgery very recently, so we're kind of taking it easy these days. That being said, he was feeling good enough yesterday to go for a quick stroll and look for some morels. This is a little bit early for us for when we usually find them anyway, but it's been so warm this spring, we thought it would be a good idea to get out there and check and see if they're popping up. Plus, at this time of year, there's so much cool stuff to look at in the forest that it's a good idea to get out and do some exploring anyway. The bumblebees are also emerging from their little forest homes and it's really sweet to see them buzzing around the trees. searching for a while, we thought we might get skunked on this trip, but then I spied a half-free morel peeking up through some leaves. Half-free morels are a related species in the Morcella family. They're not as prized and sought after as the true morels because they're a little less sturdy and they're smaller, but they're still very delicious and we were happy to find them. We also came across one of the few toxic look-alikes for morel mushrooms, the false morel. This one is also called a brain mushroom, and you can easily see why from the shape of the mushroom cap. The false morel bears a superficial resemblance to true morels, but you can always tell them apart by cutting them open. False morels will have either a solid or pithy interior, while true morels are always hollow. Well, it's not hollow. We were just going to have to be content with our half-free morels and enjoy the trillium starting to bloom around us, but then Jordan spotted a big blonde morel hiding behind a tree. Fun little fact, one of Jordan's family childhood nicknames was Finder Guy because he's so good at just spotting things, and this has served him really well since he's gotten into foraging. Now we've said before that morels are definitely a calorie negative food for us in terms of the time and energy spent looking for them versus the amount that we get, but we still do it every year because it's just such a fun event hunting for morels in the springtime. 
Plus, when you see that beautiful honeycomb pattern, it feels worth it and they're so delicious. After not being in the woods for almost two weeks, I definitely needed this. But at the same time, I don't know, I think we walked like a mile and I feel like I just ran a marathon. <laughs> but overall, good. You found some rails. Yeah. Only one eye open, that's pretty good. Yeah. My uncle was an all-American football player and he only had one working eye. Go. Different skill sets. But, yeah. With our quarry secured in our baskets, it was time to finish yes. up our pasta. We snagged an old metal pasta roller for $5 at a garage sale about 10 years ago, and it is so worth it. We don't make handmade pasta dough a lot, but when we do, we're always reminded how great fresh pasta is, especially when you can customize it with your own greens and flowers like we're doing today. This dough was a bit trickier to work with than a dough that would be made with all white flour, but I just took it slow and put it through the pasta roller very gradually and it all worked out okay. Thank you. 
After rolling the dough out into thin sheets and flouring them well, I sprinkled all those edible flowers on top and then folded the dough in half to trap them in between two layers of the dough. Then I put it back to the machine to get it nice and even and flat and cut it into long skinny strips for my noodles. Because this dough is so delicate, it's definitely going to be easier to shoot for a more rustic looking noodle than some sort of fancy shape, but that's kind of my style anyway. I left my pasta in little nests to dry for a bit while I sauteed up the mushrooms to go on top. With a mushroom as special as morels, I really try and keep it simple, so I just fried them up in some butter with salt, pepper, and some chopped up ramps.
After letting them get brown and crispy on the edges, I added them to the pasta along with a generous sprinkling of cheese. I definitely don't make pasta from scratch on the average weeknight, but it's still a really fun sort of special occasion meal, especially when you can fill it with so many plants and fungi that are growing around us right now. A sort of a spring terroir, if you will. Jordan's parents came over and they were very impressed with the pasta texture, especially considering that it was full of nettles and chestnuts and only about a third of it was all-purpose flour. And they're from Jersey, so they know pasta. Did it cure you? Good job, so. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> Have you had morels before? Yeah, when you made that pizza. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, be like emerald over here. <laughs> right. Thumbs up. Okay, I'm just saying. He's got a really affordable rate if he needs to Thanks for following along and if this video has inspired you to get out there and do some foraging of your own, we highly recommend our online course, How to Forage Your Own Food. We also have one all about gardening, how to grow your own food, and they are on sale right now if you check out the link in the video description. Also, if you're on SNAP, WIC, or other financial assistance programs, get in touch with us to learn about our sliding scale pricing options. Happy spring, see you next week.